Not they necessarily need another plan, but maybe try to improve on the 380 program. Keith Haney is back up here with the Enigma machine. And Ruben Tashavili going to be coming up from Wesley Chapel, Florida, the 2017-ish body Camaro. Waiting to get his burnout started. That's a guy we see a lot of normally running on the big tire side of things in the Pro Mod category. Ruben T. Not seeing that Ruben come through the wire yet, so maybe it's going to be a solo for Haney. Need the Precision Turbo, Calvert Racing Suspensions, KBX Performance, X275 category to lanes three, four, five, and six. Judging by what we're seeing so far, X275 is gonna be a throwdown yeah, it's tonight. It's gonna be crazy, man. So we'll see if uh, Keith Haney can lay down a pass right here once again. Schweitzer Dynamics on board, Rear Morrison Power, Larry Jeffer Race Guys, Enigma they call it. Brandon Pez will be bringing up to the line. Let's see if he can lay down a number right here. And remember, he put in the big booster seat this time. <laughs> As soon as things started happening out there, it just broke traction immediately. And Haney going to coast it through the top end. 669.8 at 93.35 miles per hour. Mark Woodruff coming up here, Altec side of the racetrack. As Keith Haney will be rolling up on a strange side. Woody last night had to, I believe, I can't remember if he, I believe he had to pedal his way out, 184 mile an hour speed, went 414. This is a car that we'd expect to see down in the 80s. Keith Haney, 669 at 93, spinning the tires off the hit. They were having problems with keeping Haney's car idling last night. They obviously got those cleaned up. The car sounds a ton better than we saw it sound during that first qualifying session on Wednesday evening. So Haney's idle issues are squared away. Truman has turned on the nitrous bottle. Yeah, this is going to be interesting right here. Brandon Schweitzer on the property. Schweitzer Dynamics to the front out there. Larry Jeffers race cars. Let's see if Keith Haney, who doesn't drive this car a lot, remember, usually drives the, the uh, big tire car, hopped in it here. Brandon Square doing the tuna. Brandon Pez on the property. Schweitzer says, yep, nope, a little bit left. Nope, straight. There we go. Let's rock and roll. If they can keep the front end down. Haney wants that number one spot. Can we see a nitrous car in the 370s? The so M&M transmissions on board here in the right hand side. Mark Woodruff trying to go to 70s also. It can happen. We already seen it. Put it in the bags. Oh, no, the chassis pedal. He still goes 398.6 at 192 miles an hour. Again, a nice driving job. Momentarily, you saw that car set down just for a half a second on the rear suspension before he's able to stand back into it. Woody goes to number 12. Haney. Does not improve his position. 4024, 191. He actually moved up a little bit. Goes to number 17. And it looks like Stevie Fast Jackson emerging from the strange side of the drag strip in the Shadow 2.0. Chuck Ford Huffer on top of the Hemi for Stevie Jackson. Man, you know Keith Haney, all he wants to do is take down Stevie Jackson, man. These guys have been smack talking back and forth throughout the years, and Haney would like nothing more than to put the 370 on the board and tell Stevie Jackson to shut up. We talked about it a little earlier, but Keith Haney definitely has a love-hate relationship with this place. He has made some fantastic runs here, but he has also had some moments he probably does not want to remember at this racetrack either. That's right, and I tell you what, Haney's got the booster seat in there. It's like the Nike. He pumps it up, and he's ready to jacked up, ready to go. Three, three seventy-five, five. Yeah. So the crowd forms behind Stevie Fast Jackson as Keith Haney purges the nitrous. Shadow two point oh. Phil Shore, it's time to put up or shut up, brother. Let's see what's gonna happen. So Steve Jackson. Clears the motor out as Keith Haney begins to find the pre-stage beam.
So Keith Haney, of course, a nitrous car. Like I said, wants to put Jackson and make him go bye bye. Remember the team car, Sitton's car went 79. You know Jackson wants to go quicker than that. Remember Jackson hasn't been in the 70s yet. Neither is Haney. At 198.88 is Keith Haney goes 391 with a five at 197 miles an hour. So Steve Jackson goes to the number two spot, matching Dan Ferris to the thousands of a second lead, but not matching him in speed. The Missouri Bay 69 Camaro, the underdog is what we call him. As he's, uh, I don't know if he's much of an underdog anymore, but we're still going to call him that because it works. 382 with a five. He went number 10. He's only made one clean hit. Yeah, he's gone from being the actual underdog to being the guy that's uh, 400 pounds that we call tiny around here. As he is now the number 10 qualifier. We've got 82. And uh, with the run we just saw of Edwards, this could very well be a 70s pass, and, and if it is, these guys are going to go ballistic because they have never been in that area of the uh, performance realm before. Haney, gone 391, definitely trying to find his way into the 80s, if not a bunch better than that. Yeah, they're going to have to turn this thing up a lot. And I know Keith Haney he probably looked at Brandon Schweitzer and Brandon Pass and said, I don't care. Turn it to the moon. Told him to sweep the leg, Cobra Kai style. That's right. I don't even care who got it. Daniel Son. The Daniel Son tune-ups going in. Uh, from what I understood, the booster seat has been removed on the left-hand side. So that's right. He is standing tall out there for Keith Haney. Can he do it? Crane kick to the face. That's what he's looking for right now. So Haney and Slave is inching their way ahead. Somebody's looking for the pre-stage beam first. Who's going to be the first to find it at the same time? Like it. Love it. Put it in the base. Haney's in. Here comes Slave to the right side. Oh, he oh, blew it up all over the place down there. Wow. 383 to 5, 203 miles an hour, and Slavens blew it up absolutely all over the place. That thing experienced a big manifold explosion down there, and it blew the hood into about a million and a half pieces as it went through the lights. Keith Haney, sorry, Keith Haney's coming. I couldn't see him. It was, it, it was an honest mistake. He was, he was barely over the top of the stage a little bit right there. Yeah. That's totally my fault. I cannot see Keith Haney standing up over there. My bad. We can see him over the wall right there. So Jeff Miller, Bumblebee, could not make the call, man. Keith is going to be the left hand side. Switzer Dynamics to Brandon Pass. Up and about Brandon Squared. Let's see what happens. I need a break now. All right, we're going to let Lawrence finish this one out. I'm going to hand the mic over to Willie Dog. He'll bring you the Extreme 29 action. Let's get it done right here. No mercy. Oh, we'll find out what Keith Haney has here. Unfortunately, Jeff Miller and the Bumblebee Blower Camaro could not make the first round of uh, eliminations here. So Haney got a left fly in the first round. 948 cubic inches of rear Morrison nitrous engine in the Enigma machine. I think if uh, Jeff Miller had been able to make it, that would have been a good side-by-side -side run right there. Would have been a fantastic yeah. race. 14 and 19 qualifiers. They were grouped pretty close together. We'll oh, find yeah. out if Haney can do it. A bunch of our competitors out here first round basically match what they did in qualifying. So we'll find out if Haney can go. He doesn't want to match what he did. 91 is, is not the sauce he's looking for, man. He wants 80s. But it's always, it's always good to make sure you try to at least make the field. A to B wins races. A to B win races. Got to do it, man. Got to do it. You're right. As Haney's crew guys step away from the Enigma machine. Last car of round one, Radio vs. the World. X275 to the staging lanes, please. X275 to the lane. goes 392.7, 195. As Keith Haney, 103 short time, did not get overly aggressive with it. He stuck the tire. He moves on around number two. Seventy-six-three at 201 for Mark Mickey as the Thunderous Nitrous car 
Um, Keith Haney rolls into the water box, the Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Wow. Look at this matchup on their race stands. Unbelievable. Talking about the two smack targets. That's the target. Who do you got? Fans, put your money up. Stevie Jackson, Keith Haney. Who's it going to be, man? This is probably one of the most talked about races of the round. Haney been talking smack talk, saying nobody can touch for you the nitrous car. He's been struggling all year long. 948 cubic inches, rear horse and power. Schweitzer Dynamics, Brandon Pez out there helping out as the Enigma, top secret. Larry Jeffer, race car. Can he take out Stevie Fast? If there is one thing neither of these drivers lack for, it is confidence. You put them both in a room by themselves, they will tell you what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. Only one guy is going to win this race, but both guys are sitting up there knowing in their heart of hearts that it's going to be them. That's what makes this so great. It's like a couple of locomotives running at each other on the same track with Keith Haney, 948 inches of Rear and Morrison nitrous-fed mountain motor and Steve Jackson, the blown alcohol-burning Hemi on the strange engineering side of the racetrack. In yeah, RJ Race Guys on the left-hand side, they debut the Shadow 2.0. Once again, Phil Short doing a two to the left-hand side, but man, look at Schweitzer. Schweitzer is going to throw everything at it right here as Keith Haney. Nothing more than that man wants to take out the Stevie Jackson. Two of the baddest talking men on the planet right there. One thing I can tell you is whoever wins this race is going to grind the other guy into dust on the internet tonight. That is a promise. As both guys now inching up, Haney's fully stir halfway there. Jackson's free stage. All right, the gloves. Oh, are we going to see a little bit of murder down? No, Stevie Fast goes in. Here comes Keith Haney. Close up. <laughs> on the tree, but it's Jackson. Wow. Oh, man. Look at that. 382 at 196. Haney was 389 at 195. Margin of victory, 17 thousandths of a second. Haney was 013 on the tree. Didn't quite have enough. Absolutely not, but Steve Jackson did. 382 at 196 miles an hour. And Steve Jackson will advance by the hair on his chinny chin chin. 17 thousandths at the stripe. Mile an hour, they were within, a, they were within a, well, what, two tenths of one mile an hour at the stripe. An absolute, almost just amazing drag race. And Jackson, what you'd expect, the two cars were quick to 60, but when we look back at that run previous, what we just saw Mickey do with that 975 short time, it's tough to be impressed with a one flat or a 103. No, not at all, exactly.